Hi, I'm Ida Batrose and I'm going back to school with Student Edge. Hi, I'm Simon Morado and today we're going back to school with Ida Buttrose. Ida, thanks so much for chatting with us. It's a pleasure. Now, I understand that you knew that you wanted to get into journalism from about the age of 11. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you know at that time or what was it about the gig that, that was so attractive to you at that age? Well, I guess I always liked writing, you know, so composition and English were, my, were, were good subjects of mine at school. But I think I was heavily influenced by my father, who was a journalist, and he and my mother's many friends who were all artists, photographers, writers, journalists, you name it. And so I grew up in that kind of a household and it seemed to me that they all had this wonderful zest for living and they seemed very lively and interested in everything. And, you know, I was very close to my father. I used to um, talk with him and walk with him and I'd sometimes make his breakfast when he was going off to edit a newspaper because he was a newspaper editor as well. And, and you know, just the whole, the whole thing about journalism just really captured my imagination and, I, and I'm, I'm absolutely right I have never regretted that decision because all the good things that have happened to me in my life have been through journalism. Well it's interesting that you say that your father was a journalist as well and that he you know you wanted to follow those footsteps or certainly that lifestyle he couldn't have known what the media landscape would be like in 2016. Now you've adapted remarkably over the years from being the founding editor of Clio to now hosting Studio 10 but when you kind of look back over this period and, and perhaps when you speak to young aspiring journalists do you still see it as an attractive kind of career path? Well, there, there will always be there will always be new chapters to be written in the media, and and I think that's the exciting thing of it. You know, you you don't know where it's taking you. You don't know where technology is taking us. We know that technology has changed the the, the landscape for all of us working in media. But I think to its advantage, not to its disadvantage. And I think that's the way you've got to look at it. That, it, that you know, being a journalist is a bit of an adventure. Uh, or it's a, being a journalist is an adventure, if you like. And, and, and it takes, it opens doors that you never imagined would be open to you. So there's always been less job, fewer jobs than, than the people that wanted them. You know, we've never been able to accommodate everybody who wanted to work in the media. So you've got to really work hard. To, to make it in the, in this game, you know, you've got to be you've got to be as knowledgeable as you possibly can be. You've got to get as much experience as you possibly can. You're never going to start at the top. It's always good to start at the bottom. I mean, I started as about as low as you can. I, I was a copy girl. That meant I ran messages, and and picked up lunches and made tea and coffee. But that's fine if you know what it's like at the bottom. When you get to the top, you understand the frustrations of the people working for you, and that's a good thing. So I've never been afraid to learn. I've never been afraid to ask for help. Sometimes I've, I've volunteered for jobs, you know, and I've got them. And then I think, oh, gosh, there's a few things I don't know. <laughs> I have to sort of augment my knowledge. And I've, I've never been afraid to say to somebody, look, I really, like, I really like what you do with your pages in terms of layout. Can you give me some advice? Or what books do you recommend I read? Or where do you think I should study? And I think as long as you are prepared to always ask and, and seek help when you need it, or mentors we call them now, um, you can succeed in almost anything you want to do. Is this the kind of profession where you do learn more on the job? Because I understand you left school fairly early. Uh, where do you feel like you, you got your, your sort of experience from and your learning? Oh, life. I mean, I am a graduate of the University of Life. I say that to people. Yes, I did leave school at 15 because at, when I was a girl, a girl's education and a girl's career wasn't considered all that important. It wasn't assumed that we would have a career. You know, girls used to work for a little bit, then they'd get married and have children and go home. Well, I did get married and I did have children. I just didn't go home. That's the difference. <laughs> and so you couldn't think of a better profession in which to be because you're always learning. You know, you can't do good stories if you haven't done your research. Uh, you, you can't sort of convey pictures and images if you don't know what it is you're talking about. So I've learnt about art and theatre and travel and politics and life generally and people in particular because of this very profession that I chose. It's been a constant learning experience and I, I'm still learning. You're always learning and I think that is the key to advancement. And the moment you think you've you know everything. You 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 really stop your own career. So I know that there's still learning to be done. Learning about the new technology. What else can I do with technology now? Can I can I merge it with something in print? Can I can I use print to a better advantage if I put photographs on a on a digital publication? All those sorts of things. I find it very exciting. The possibilities that are ahead of us. Well, you blaze such a trail at Clio, and and you made such such 
great leaps and strides in, in feminism and equality, do you still feel today there is still quite a ways to go? Do you consider how do we fight misogyny in 2016? I don't know that I think, mis I don't know that I think how do we fight misogyny. I mean, how do we encourage women and girls to keep having a go? How do we encourage them to put their hands up and volunteer? I think they I think inherent in women is a, is a reluctance to push ourselves forward. I think a lot of women think they must know something 100% before they put their hand up. You don't. That's not true. 70% will do you, as long as you accept that you're going to have to learn on the job as well. That's what a bloke does. I mean, a man, a man is quite happy to say, yeah, I can do that. I know 70% of what I need to know, then I'll, I'll get the rest if I go along. And that's, and that's what women have to learn from men. We need to emulate the fantastic way men push themselves forward. And we need to take a leaf out of their book and do the same thing. And it's okay to put your hand up. And yes, you do have to juggle. And yes, you can have a family. And yes, you might have to sort of get childcare and all those things. And there's nothing easy about life. There's nothing easy about a career. There's nothing easy about success. It, it takes determination and the will to do it. And if, if that's your goal, then you'll always find a way to do it and to achieve it. Just wrapping up, looking back on your teenage years, and again, you know, you, you entered the workforce for so early. Do you have any regrets about your teenage days? No, I don't have any regrets about my life at all. I see no point in having regrets because you cannot change the path you've taken. And everything you've done is what makes you the person you are at this very moment in time. Now, you either like that person or you don't. Well, I'm quite comfortable with who I am and I have no idea what would have happened if I hadn't have done what I've done. And I just think that I've had a fantastic career. And as I said to you at the beginning of this interview, it's all because I knew when I was 11, I wanted to be a journalist. <laughs> Very few people get to live out their, their childhood dreams of what their career would be at 11. Congratulations on yours, Ida. Thanks for your time. Pleasure. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed that video, subscribe to our channel on YouTube or find more of our stuff at studentedge.com.au.